Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us at today's webinar, Coping with the Canadian Winter. So anytime during this webinar, please feel free to interact with us. You can use the chat feature if you just want to say hi, if you have any comments, or the Q&A feature if you want to leave a question for us, because we will have a Q&A session at the end of this webinar. We do have a survey as well, and your feedback from this webinar is very helpful for career loans because we want to keep producing great content such as today's webinar. So I will send out an email with this link. So don't feel free. Uh, don't feel like you need to scramble down and write this URL because there will be an email afterwards. Uh, but just to say your, your feedback on today's webinar will be greatly appreciated. Who's here today? My name is Gavin O. Young. I'm the content creator for Career Loans. And I'm joined by today's guest speaker, Candice Fox, who is our Saskatchewan Outreach Consultant for Career Loans. Um, now, what is Career Loans? We prepared a brief video to explain the program, but I'll talk more about it later after Candice's presentation. But without further ado, please enjoy this video. Are you a permanent resident, convention refugee, or Canadian citizen residing in Alberta or Saskatchewan? Are you an internationally trained individual in a regulated or non-regulated occupation? If you are not finding a job in your field, need career counseling, are unable to secure funds for training, or have been declined for traditional loans, then career loans can help. Career Loans is a virtual program that has partnered with HSBC Canada to provide financial counseling, career counseling, loans of up to $15,000, referrals to employment services, alternative career advice, and a guide to the accreditation process. Our expert counselors will coach you on your career goals and enable you to reach your full potential. If you would like to apply for a loan, our counselors will refer you to our financial partner, HSBC Canada. After assessing your financial situation, if you are eligible, your loan will get approved. You then have up to four years to pay off your loan at an affordable locked-in interest rate. This way, you don't have to worry about increasing interest rates or being buried under rising debt. Throughout the process, our expert counselors will be available to guide, mentor, and ensure you are on the right path to achieving your career goals. So what is on the agenda today? Today's um, first, uh, we'll be introducing our guest speaker, Candice Fox. Uh, Candice will be giving the bulk of the presentation, Coping with uh, Canadian Winter. And I'll be coming in for a short career loans info session on our third point, how can career loans help? Afterwards, we will have our Q&A. And remember, any time during this presentation, please feel free to use the chat or the Q&A features so that you can get in touch with the show. So without further ado, I want to introduce our guest speaker, Candice Fox. If you could please turn on your video. There she is. How's it going, Candice? Good. This is funny. We're like, I'm usually where you're at in this whole mix of things. So yeah, no, this is, this is interesting. I'm excited to be here and to, and to present with you guys. Awesome. So here's a, I want to read a short bio of Candice, just so our audience gets to know you a bit better. Um, born and raised in Saskatchewan, Candice's roots are grounded in the flat plains of the Canadian prairies. With a background in marketing, Candice has enjoyed amazing professional opportunities, including co-owning a marketing and public relations firm, being a producer for Global TV and City TV, writing and editing for a lifestyle magazine, and working in the nonprofit sector. Candice is currently studying mindfulness in a modern society and is undertaking her advanced EFT practitionership. Her current research project focuses on self-regulation tools and adult ADHD. Candice also keeps herself busy with their work as an outreach consultant for career loans in Saskatchewan, consulting for nonprofits and small businesses and freelance writing for clients across Canada. Most of her free time is spent hanging out with her favorite fur babies, 
and searching for the best of wheat squares in Saskatoon. If anyone has any ideas around that, throw them my way. <laughs> All right, so thank you for taking the time uh, to come on today's webinar. Uh, without further ado, you have I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it away. All right, I'm gonna share my screen with everyone. Thank you so much, Gavin, for the warm introduction. Um, and so, yeah, we're gonna get rolling. When I was asked to do this presentation, I actually had a little bit of a chuckle. If someone would have told me, you know, 10 or 15 years ago that I would be, you know, talking about winter um, and kind of being an ambassador, if you will, for, you know, the next 30 minutes, uh, I would have laughed because my relationship with winter has slowly improved. And I would say that I'm in deep gratitude with this season. So hopefully I can do it some justice uh, for the next couple of minutes with you guys. I'm gonna be asking some questions. Feel free to interact with me in the um, chat or Q&A feature. Um, if you'd like to share, please do. It's an invitation if you don't want to, um, then just some introspection and, um, you know, observing, you know, what's happening in your, in your head and in your body with some of these questions. Uh, I do want to note that even though I do work, as Gavin said, I do work in the area of nervous system regulation with clients. I am not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional or a mental health practitioner. Um, and so everything outlined in this presentation is just an invitation for you to learn uh, more about this new environment and explore for yourself. Um, all the information you can find online, I've cited my sources where I felt it was necessary and applicable. Um, but of course, please consult your doctor if you're, you know, thinking about um, taking vitamins or, or supplements or, you know, doing any sort of physical activity that could hinder your health or, or any pre-existing conditions. Um, something that's really important for me is just to acknowledge, um, our, you know, the fact that we are on treaty land. We're all um, people of the treaty whether you're in Alberta, Saskatchewan, or, or Ontario. So I'd like to just acknowledge that I live, work, and benefit from Treaty 6 territory, the traditional homeland of the Métis, the traditional homeland meeting grounds and traveling route to the Cree, Saltu, Blackfoot, Métis, Diné, and Nakota Sui. It is important to acknowledge all the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries and centuries and centuries long before we arrived. And we are all essentially settlers on this land. So just a starting point, um, I took this excerpt from the Health Ec Economics Review um, article, and I thought this was really important to note. So happiness index is a comprehensive indicator that reflects the quality of the society and should not be ignored. As proven in many studies, good health promotes higher levels of happiness and happiness promotes better health. And I'm gonna read that line again, cause it's so important. As proven in many studies, good health promotes higher levels of happiness and happiness promotes better health. Health and happiness are so interconnected, um, entangled, and you know, it really frames how we you know, move and interact and see the world. If we're not happy, it affects our health. And if we're, you know, if we're unhealthy, generally, you know, we're not happy. So something to think about as we move through this presentation. Okay, um, so we are in relationship with everything around us. We're not just in relationship with the people, um, our bubble, our coworkers. We're in relationship with um, the city that we live in, our jobs, um, you know, our home space. Um, and so, you know, I'd just like you to observe or ask yourself the question, what is my relationship with winter? Um, because I think that really frames um, you know, our experiences and how we feel during the season, even if we're looking forward to winter or not, um, it can definitely impact your kids if you have a family, uh, it can impact your partner. If you're, you know, someone who is very new to Canada, maybe you've heard some things about our winter. I'm sure our winters are, you know, infamous in, in certain places around the world. So just something to think about, you know, what's your relationship with winter? Uh, is it an amicable relationship? Um, are you just surviving in winter? You're just coexisting. Are you tolerant of winter? 
Um, if you're really new here, maybe you're unsure or unfamiliar with it. Um, are you excited? Are you curious? Uh, do you love winter? I, I wouldn't say that I love winter, but I'm definitely, um, I appreciate and I do get excited for, for the season. So hopefully we can move you if you're on one side of the spectrum, maybe we can move you further center um, and maybe even into the deep appreciation or respect. Okay, so topics we are going to explore today. So staying warm and safety. I'm gonna talk a little bit about authentic movement and winter activities, um, combating the winter blues because that is absolutely a real thing. And then we're going to talk about getting social when you want to hi hibernate. I also just want to um, state the obvious because we're also in the middle of a global pandemic that's going to affect, um, you know, how you are in the world today and your experiences in winter. Um, and I was talking to an epidemiologist friend of mine and she said, the good news is we are in the thick of it right now. This is the worst it's going to be um, as a vaccine comes out and, and regardless of what your opinion is of the vaccine, um, you know, right now we're in the worst of it, knock on wood. So, you know, thinking about um, your world today and how you are in these cold winter months, um, you know, I invite you to, you know, get excited for the opportunity to, you know, move around more freely, be more social, um, and experience winter differently next year. Okay, so stay warm and keep safe. Yeah, like winter is no joke, um, especially in Alberta and Saskatchewan. And I don't wanna say that we get the, you know, the biggest hit um, because I know winter is felt, you know, from coast to coast, but yeah, winter in Saskatchewan and Alberta is, is very real and very intense at times. You always want to make sure that you're dressed for the temperature and any fluctuations that might happen in the short amount of time. In this past week here in Saskatoon, we had a beautiful day all day and then in the evening it was like, you know, something just clicked and we had high winds and it was it was a snowstorm. So for those of you who are, you know, working outside of the home, you want to really take into consideration when you're going to work, um, you know, what might happen in that eight hour span before you get home, okay? So um, again, snowstorms can happen mid afternoon after a sun sunny morning. And, you know, on the flip side, a warm temperatures can turn into slush and ice. And before you know it, you're, you know, you're driving in, in slush and, and slippery conditions. So always be ready for any weather in the winter. Um, just some advice that I wish my 20 year old self could hear me talk about today, but, um, you know, number one is layers, layers, layers. You want to make sure that you are layering um, for the winter months because it's so easy to take off um, some articles of clothing rather than, you know, sitting being uncomfortable and, and cold. Uh, you want to make sure that your jacket is, you know, waterproof. Uh, wind resistant and has some sort of um, temperature gauge like, you know, minus 20 to 35. Um, and, and like I said, again, you can always take layers off, but when you're out maybe doing some physical activity or even shoveling your driveway, um, you know, you can't put extra layers on if you don't have them. So make sure that whatever you're doing or wherever you're going, uh, you just dressed for the, like I said, the weather that you're in and the potential for what could happen in five to eight hours. Um, taking extra clothing when traveling, this is so important. And, um, you know, I just want to also make a note about traveling in the winter for some of you who are new to Canada. And, um, you know, maybe you've never driven in a snowstorm before. Never do that. You know, there is nothing out there that is so important that you need to drive in, um, you know, hazardous conditions. I myself was on the highway, Highway 11 this week, um, going from Saskatoon to Regina. And I, I had a friend of mine who was, who was on the highway before me and I asked him, you know, like, how, how bad is it? And he said, well, it's pretty treacherous. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm an avid driver. I've lived in Saskatchewan all my life. I think I can, I think I can handle it. Well, I had to pull over to the side of the road a few times just to regulate my nervous system there were semis on the highway with their hazards on. So, you know, like 
someone like myself who I feel like I've, I'm a seasoned winter driver, you still never wanna take that risk. So with that said, if you are doing any winter driving, make sure you take an extra pair of boots, a blanket, a jacket, water and some snacks. You never know what's gonna happen. You want to absolutely have a emergency kit in your car specific for winter. You can get those at um, Canadian Tire, any sort of home hardware um, store, but you, you wanna make sure that you're prepared you never know when you might get a flat tire or, you know, weather conditions down the road get get bad and you need to just, you know, pull over. So always be overly cautious in the wintertime, especially for you newcomers who, you know, haven't, um, aren't used to driving in in that kind of weather. And, um, you know, you always just want to make sure that you're you're overly prepared. Proper footwear is essential. This can really make or break a day. Um, back in my 20s, I you know, I was always, I hate winter, it's cold, I don't like it, but you know, I was never dressed for winter and I was always clunking around in inappropriate shoes, high heels or whatever. So, you know, it's important to wear the proper shoes, not just to protect your feet from wet and cold, but also the ice, um, you know, you never know when there's some snow over top of the ice and the next thing you know, your butt's hitting the concrete and that can be very dangerous, especially for um, you know, people who, you know, might have weak bones or, or maybe you've broken a bone in the past and it just hasn't properly healed. So it's really for safety reasons, reasons you want to make sure that you're thinking about function over fashion, which I know some of us don't even like to utter those words, but, um, you know, some really solid advice for, for a lot of people who are new to Canada. So just something to take into consideration. Okay, so authentic movement and winter activities. Being active is especially important in the winter, um, but it's really important to do activities and move your body's body in a way that's authentic. Um, you never wanna bully your body to you know, have to work out, have to look this way, have to do this. You wanna do things um, and move your body in ways that feel happy and joyful. Otherwise, you're not gonna wanna do it and it's just gonna be another stress in your life. So yes, you're probably not gonna find yourself going on long jogs or family bike rides, but there are other things that you can do outside, um, you know, with your bubble or, or with your partner or your family um, that can be entertaining. And I, you know, one thing that I really hope everyone takes away from this is be creative, um, be inventive, you know, make the fun happen. Um, you know, don't just rely on on you know community activities or, or things available to you. Like if you want to have fun and experience winter, go out and do it. Just you know, obviously make sure that you're you're safe, you're warm, and being COVID sensitive. Um, I want to touch on the importance of fresh air. Uh, studies show that being outdoors, surrounded by nature, and fresh air can increase a person's energy by ninety percent. I found that in the Journal of Environmental Psychology. So bundle up, go for a walk around the block. Once you get moving, you start to warm up and you don't feel so cold. Um, if you're someone who lives in a scenic area, in a small town, maybe you have um, trails, or if you're in Regina or Saskatoon, maybe you're by Wascana or the river, um, you know, take the opportunity, 15 minutes, get out of the house, even if it's a little bit colder than usual, bundle up breathe in that fresh air, I promise you it will absolutely change your day. Um, community activities. One thing, this is probably a pet peeve of mine, but when I hear people say, oh, there's nothing to do in the winter months, you know, I actually feel like, especially in, um, you know, Saskatchewan, we, and in the smaller communities, because it's so important to get out there and move your body um, and to get that fresh air, I feel like more and more we're seeing activities and, and um, you know, festivals, all sorts of things popping up that people can do with their families or by themselves out um, outside. So yeah, like I said, there are lots of winter festivals in Saskatoon and in Regina. Outdoor sports, shinny, skating, um, you can skate downtown in Saskatoon. If you're in a smaller center, there might be like a, a lake that the community goes to to go skating, um, sleigh rides, lots of stuff happening. And if there isn't something happening in your community, make something happen. Weave in your culture, um, you know, create something that um, you can do and invite other community 
members to join in. So with that said, um, for those of you who are new to Canada, this is absolutely an opportunity to try something new. Um, you know, switch making sand castles to snow castles, make snowmen, uh, snow angel, try ice fishing, ice skating, um, just put yourself out there. Yes, you are probably going to slip and fall a few times. Um, but, you know, half of the fun is just getting out there and and enjoying the actual activity, not how not how good you are. So. OK, so these are just some um, activities you could do. And this photo was actually taken by my partner. He's really getting into cross country skiing. But for Christmas this year, I got him like so much stuff to to bundle up. I don't think he wears half the things that I got him. I'm probably overly cautious, but um, I wanted to make sure that he was toasty warm. So I might have went a little overboard, but needless to say, like I said, he's out there layered. He could take stuff off if it gets too hot. So he's on the Miwasan Trail right by Spadina for those of you in Saskatoon who might uh, notice the area that he's in. So so just some suggestions, snowshoeing, um, you know, outdoor skating, skiing, snowboarding, making snow angels, uh, have a snowball fight, take fo photos of the beautiful snowfall, the first snowfall um, and the icicles, make a snow maze. Um, you know, a, a big one right now that I'm seeing a lot of my friends do um, is a bonfire in their bar backyard. You know, you're outside, COVID sensitive, keep, you know, three to six feet distance, um, turn that fire on, bundle up, bring the blankets out, get the kids out there and enjoy some ho hot cocoa by the fire. So just some ideas for outdoor activities and then switching it up. Because let's face it, it there are times where it is minus 50 in Saskatchewan and Alberta. Um, and so there are those days where you absolutely don't want to go outside. I'd still recommend cracking a window and breathing in that fresh air, but um, you know you don't want to expose your skin to that weather for any sort of length of time. So um, for me and my bubble, a big thing is family game day or night. Also doing pizza and movie nights. Tonight is pizza and movie night. So I'm going to be making homemade pizza dough. I found a variety of recipes that I've been you know, making uh, as COVID kind of has been hit. Um, and we've all been sort of self-isolating. Um, you learn something new, learn feng shui and then rearrange your house. Um, Zoom with your friends or family members. Uh, write a letter to your friends and family members. I feel like that's a lost art. No one writes letters anymore. Um, you know, chill and binge watch Netflix, have a spa day, force your husband to rub your feet, get your kids involved with that. Um, you know, journal or write, take up a new hobby. Uh, one thing that I did was I went on Coursera and EDX and found some, you know, free online courses that I could take. So I took the Indigenous Canada course through the University of Alberta, completely free. Anyone can take these courses. So if you are someone who just wants to, you know, expand your horizons a little bit, maybe do some self-development, you know, take the opportunity to le learn something new. Um, yeah, you know, have a dance party in the middle of the day. Do it with your family, maybe about 15 minutes, just move your body authentically and um, get that blood flowing. Okay, so oop, going back there. There we go. Um, so for some of you, maybe you've heard of winter blues before you came to Canada and it's a very real thing. Um, you know, it can impact newcomer families, especially if you're used to warmer climates and lots of sunshine. Um, the prolonged cold and the shorter days are, are absolutely going to affect you and you, you want to recognize that and acknowledge that. Some, you know, factors included in that would be the increased isolation. So this is not normal and it's going to impact you. Um, stress, which would be exasperated by the pandemic. Uh, vitamin, vitamins and nutrients, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, sleep, we're going to talk about that. We just talked about fresh air and activity. We're going to talk about some self-care tools and then social connection. Before we jump into the vitamins and nutrients, again, I'm not a, um, I'm not a healthcare practitioner. I'm not a nutritionist. So, you know, all of this information, please take with a grain of salt. If you feel like it is, um, you know, something that you want to learn more about, 
you know, maybe talk to your healthcare provider or do your own research before you, you know, start taking vitamins, you might not be needing. Um, and so you definitely don't want to do that. So vitamin D, which they also call the sunshine vitamin. In 2013, Stats Canada released a study um, that they had been doing from 2009 and I think 2011. And what that showed was 32% of Canadians have insufficient vitamin D levels and 10% were deficient. Um, it also showed that on average, vitamin D levels were higher in the summer months versus the winter months, which can, makes completely sense. Um, and so why is vitamin D important? Well, it is most important in the winter months because it helps regulate mood and reduces depression. Uh, it also fights against disease, including uh, reduces the likelihood of developing the flu. It's also really great for heart disease. Um, you might have heard some information online around COVID-19 and vitamin D. Don't quote me on that. Do your own research. But I think there were some um, clinical studies or some research, research that showed um, a higher level of vitamin D was able to combat COVID, um, something along those lines. So just you know, something to take into consideration. The great thing about Eastern diets, which, you know, us Westerners could take um, a lesson, you know, Eastern diets are really rich in a variety of, um, you know, meats and, um, you know, fish and nuts and all sorts of things. So um, I've given you food sources for all of these things because I think it's important. Um, and so if you're looking and you see like, oh, I've got lots of canned tuna and I eat a lot of eggs and mushrooms, um, then, you know, the chances are that you might not need to, um, you know, take additional vitamin D. So just also feeling in your body, your body knows what it needs. And um, so, yeah, just being aware of, of how you're feeling. So the food sources for vitamin D, like I said, salmon, uh, canned tuna, which is a really cheap option, egg yolks, mushrooms, and then fortified foods like cow's milk, soy milk, cereal, and oatmeal. So in those situations, they're not naturally found in those products. Uh, they've been included. Additional vitamins and nutrients, we're looking at vitamin C, which we all know is an immune booster. Uh, food sources, really easy citrus fruits, so our oranges and our grapefruits, red bell peppers, berries, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, iron, which regulates the body, our body temperature and moves oxygen around in our blood. Food sources for that would be, you know, our red meats, fish, poultry, beans, lentils, dates, and spinach. The zinc, again, another immune booster. So a food source there would be oysters, red meat, beans, poultry, nuts. Um, sleep. So another really important, um, you know, part of coping with winter is our sleep. So expert, experts believe, um, so if you are feeling like you need more sleep throughout the winter months, that's absolutely, um, you know, you definitely would feel that because for some of us, we go to work, it's dark, we come home, it's dark and it, um, it can mess up with our sleep cycles. Experts believe this has more to do with the decrease in sunlight exposure than needing to, you know, hibernate because we're mammals. Um, so this is just a quote from Dr. Sarah Jarvis. Lower light intensity means it's time for bed, sending a signal to the brain that it should start preparing the body for sleep, while more light is associated with alertness. So um, yeah, you, you might feel like you need uh, eight or nine hours, where in the summer months, I'm okay with six or seven. So just again, adapting your body um, to, you know, doing what it needs to do in the winter months, just so that you have that energy. Uh, just some recommendations to improve sleep and avoid disruptive sleep patterns, um, ditch stimulants like, you know, maybe decrease the amount of uh, alcohol you're drinking or um, coffee before bed, you might want to just stray away from that. Avoid screens and artificial light before bed, so keeping the phone and the tablets and all that stuff far away from you and the kids for maybe 30 to 45 minutes before bedtime. And then again, super important, just getting fresh air and moving throughout the day. Okay, so self-care and self-soothing. So I do just wanna make a note that self-care and self-soothe are very different, or well, they can be. Self-care is more, uh, if you think about sort of the long-term investment in your mental, emotional, physical, energetical, or energetic 
uh, financial health and well-being. So we're looking at the long-term gain. Self-soothe is kind of like, you know, things that make us feel good in the moment. Um, so, you know, neither one, um, you know, is bad necessarily. Um, we self do self-care and self-soothing all the time. So, you know, there's no judgment either way. Um, but self-care is essential 12 months of the year. I feel it especially during the winter months. I need a little bit more, you know, pampering. I need a little bit more self-care. Um, and you, you might feel that, especially with the global pandemic, you just, you know, you just need to take care of yourself and making sure that you're healthy and happy. And this is gonna look different for everyone. Um, balance is different for everyone. Nervous system regulation and dysregulation is different for everyone. So you always wanna check in with yourself and, and not doing any sort of comparison or, or blaming yourself or, or shame or anything like that. Everyone deserves to feel good and I, want to repeat that, you know, everyone deserves to feel good in their bodies. Um, whether you've been in Canada all your life or you're new, you deserve to be happy and healthy and thrive in this country and in this province. Um, Self-care and self-soothing does not have to be expensive or elaborate. You don't need to go on a staycation for, you know, three nights and stay in a hotel. You absolutely don't need to do that. You just need to get creative. Um, you can, you know, talk to your therapist or a counselor. That's self-care. Meditate is self-care. Quit alcohol can be self-care. Engage in self-discovery, self-care. Eat good food, self-care. Eating a puckweed square, which is what I do sometimes a little too often, that is self-soothing. Drinking wine while zooming with your girlfriends or guy friends or family member, that would be considered self-soothing. More self-care ideas. Um, and again, you know, people get confused, confused around the self-care and the self-soothing ideas. Um, so some of these would be more self-soothing um, and some of them for sure, like staying hydrated, drinking, you know, the right amount of water every day, learning something new. Absolutely, these are self-care activities. Getting the right amount of sleep, uh, self-care, playing a board game with friends, that feels good in the, the moment, that would be self-soothing, coloring, uh, that can be very therapeutic. Treating yourself, again, self-soothing. Um, I got a cat during the pandemic and, um, you know, self-care or or a lot of work, either or. <laughs> you can look at it any way. Um, if you're an animal lover like me, pets really help me regulate my nervous system. So I love to be around um, my fur babies, as Gavin um, so eloquently said. Planting a garden, again, that's definitely a self-care in, um, in the summer times. I brought my plants indoors so I can tend to them. And it's just sort of a taste of nature in my apartment. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, exercising, of course, authentic movement, not pushing yourselves, doing things that bring you joy and make you happy. All of those things are good and you wanna incorporate them, especially, especially in the winter months. Okay. So social interaction, um, you know, like I said before, the good news is we're in the thick of it in terms of the pandemic um, moving forward. Winter won't look like this. I've tried to give ideas with COVID in mind, but also um, thinking past COVID. Um, so, you know, this is also very dependent on your personality. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Um, and so some of the stuff might feel like that's not for me, then, you know, scratched off the list, you don't need to do it. But these are just some suggestions of ways to, to interact and engage with the world outside, either today um, in COVID or tomorrow when hopefully this will pass. So when I'm feeling lonely or alone, or I just need social interaction, uh, I like to go for a walk outside. There are usually lots of people kind of walking around um, and, you know, interacting. And so I'm, I'm the girl on the trail that's waving and saying, hi, how are you? Good morning, good afternoon. Um, I try to make eye contact with people and just have that connection, even though it's a stranger, I, you know, it makes me feel good and hopefully it makes them feel good. If you're new, that might be uncomfortable for you. So maybe just walking around and just being in the presence of other people will make you feel better. Uh, regular Zoom dates with friends and family, of course, engaging with them. Um, you know, after COVID, I would recommend volunteering if you're, you know, someone who likes to give back to the community, if you're looking 
if you're someone who's looking for work, if you're someone who just wants to, um, you know, make those connections, make friends, um, volunteering in the community can do a vast um, amount of good for yourself and for those that you are volunteering for those organizations. So, um, and we have so many organizations and nonprofits in, in the province who are always looking for, you know, for people to help out. So, um, you've got your pick of a variety of places to go. So, you know, choose something again that piques your interest and that you feel really passionate about. Connect on social media with cultural groups, uh, communities or associations in your city. So if you are here from, you know, Africa, if you're here from China, wherever, and you want to connect with your cultural groups, you can find them online. There are lots of Facebook groups, um, communities or associations in your city. So, um, you know, Expand your horizons, um, but certainly create a safety net for yourself. And if you just need to kind of be in and among people in your own cultural community, that's completely understandable. Connect with settlement or newcomer organizations and agencies. Um, this is so important. You meet so many people going to classes and workshops, whether you're working on your language skills, um, computer skills, or maybe you're in an all women's um, development or workshop. Uh, take the opportunity to kind of put yourself out there. A lot of these things have moved online, so they're not eliminated. You just need to connect with, um, with a settlement or a newcomer agency in your area. And I can tell you from the work that I do with career loans, we have them all across the province. So um, if you aren't sure what's in your area, feel free, you can reach out to me. My contact information will be available and um, I can we can definitely refer you to a settlement or a newcomer agency in your area. Search for business associations or networking groups in your city. Uh, there are still lots of virtual gatherings, um, business and other. So, you know, if you are a doctor or a healthcare practitioner or an engineer and you want to connect with like minded people in your profession, there is absolutely lots of groups. Um, LinkedIn, Facebook are good resources as well to look. If you want to learn something new, meet new people, uh, you know, register for a language or if you want to learn, um, you know, musical skills, there is lots of opportunity to sign up for free classes or to, um, you know, look online to see if there are free webinars or, or and then connect with people that way. There are lots of forums where people will interact and talk about their experience. So, um, you know, a lot of this is just really putting yourself out there. I feel like for us introverts, this whole COVID thing has kind of been, uh, you know, if you're a newcomer, it's kind of been like a gentle entrance into the community because you can still have the safety of your, you know, surroundings, you're behind the computer. So for some people that might make it safe, other people like the extroverts, you're really itching to get out there. Um, but regardless, you know, take that risk, put yourself out there. It is absolutely worth it. Um, a big one, I would say, would, uh, would be write letters to elderly in our local care facilities. I had a really beautiful conversation with um, Brenda Boudry from the Canadian Mental Health Association in Saskatoon. And we were talking about how the pandemic was really impacting our elderly communities. And, you know, make a pen pal with someone who is a, maybe an unlikely friend choice for you. But... I can guarantee you these people would love to hear from you, love to hear your story, and maybe you can learn a little bit about them and their story as well. So that might be an oddball, um, you know, recommendation for social interaction, but, um, you know, pen pals can, you know, make a world of difference in your life and in the life of the other individual. So uh, book clubs, mommy, family groups, social community events. Like I said, everything is kind of moved virtually and online. So there should be, you know, a wealth of, um, of things that you can sign up for. Again, if you are in an area and you're just not quite sure if you're in a smaller center, feel free to reach out to me. I can um, sort of help provide some information or connect you with a, a settlement or a newcomer agency in that area that can maybe guide you a little bit more. Um, but for the most part, you know, I'd like to think that Canadians and, um, you know, all of us in Alberta and Saskatchewan coast to coast really want to see our newcomer um, families and, um, you know, survive and thrive and enjoy all the months, not just winter, but especially in the winter. So I know that we still have lots of newcomers who have come uh, and landed in Canada during our colder months and, and it might be a little bit jarring. So 
you know, certainly reach out to, to career loans and, and we'll do our best to um, help you with your, you know, career sort of endeavors and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, there are lots of options. You just have to get creative and kind of um, search out what you're looking for. That is the end of my presentation, but I wanted to end with this quote and it says, to appreciate the beauty of a snowflake, it is necessary to stand out in the cold. So that is it, that is all. Thank you so much everyone for listening to me chat about winter in specifically in Saskatchewan. Um, I feel like I should wear a sash that's like the winter ambassador for for Saskatchewan. Do I get a sash, Gavin? Maybe like it's a, a virtual. winter, <laughs> maybe a crown. Thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. I'm sure a lot of our audience members found that very, very engaging. Um, and, you know, I know many newcomers uh, in, Sask in Saskatchewan, even Canada might not, who are from warmer countries might not be familiar with winter. So I really hope that this webinar did provide, you know, very informative, very helpful information. So thank you again, Candice. Thank you. Um, before we move on to the Q&A session, I am going to give a short presentation about the Career Loans Program. So um, take, this as a, take this time to listen to what we can do for internationally trained newcomers, but also uh, we will have our Q&A session afterwards. So use this time to also think of questions and type them in the Q&A part. Okay, let's... Share my screen here. So I'm just wanna, so I just wanna talk a bit about the Career Loans Program. I know we watched the video before, but I just wanted to expand on what we saw. So the Career Loans Program is a fully virtual service for internationally trained individuals in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Fully virtual in the sense where you can get in touch with us on the internet or on the phone from the comfort of your own home. What do we do? We provide free career support services and assistance with a microloan application if you desire that. At the end of the day, our goal is to guide internationally trained individuals so that they can return to a desired career. We do have a bit of an eligibility criteria. So first of all, you need to be an internationally trained individual in a regulated or non-regulated occupation and trade who is currently residing in Alberta or Saskatchewan. Your status needs to be either a permanent refugee, a Canadian citizen, or a convention refugee with a minimum Canadian language benchmark level of five. If you have any other questions about the eligibility criteria, please do get in touch with us and we'll do our best to answer your questions. What are the features of career loans? Uh, first of all, the free career and financial counseling provided by our expert counselors is what you'll be getting. Uh, these are counselors who work with newcomers and they're here to listen and understand your situation to help you personally. We also offer low interest microloans of up to $15,000, referrals to employment services. Uh, our expert counselors are also, you know, they can guide you through the accreditation process or if you wanna talk about alternative careers, they are also able to talk to you about that. Other career loans benefits includes webinars, such as today. Uh, expert counselors, like I mentioned, they're here to help. They're here to help you get back to your career. We have the latest industry trends, whether that be from webinars, blogs, speaking with our counselors, tons of content for career loans members. And of course, live guest speakers. We have one today, we'll have one. We had one last month, we had one the other month, you know, uh, and moving forward, tons of guest speakers lined up for our future webinars as well. Now, how do we help? What happens when you sign up for career loans? Well, first you need to go to our website, www.careerloans.ca, fill out our super short application form. Takes two minutes. Uh, from then, one of our counselors will reach out to you within two business days to, to arrange your virtual counseling session. In this session, you're gonna talk about your career paths, your goals, what do you hope to accomplish? And based on that one-on-one -on -one session, you could get a referral to a local service provider. 
uh, personalized referral based on your one-on-one -on -one session with our expert counselors. The third step, microloan, is only if you want it. There's no obligation to take out a microloan, but if you are interested, a microloan is available. A counselor will help you create the microloan application. More about the microloan, it's provided by our partners at HSBC Bank. So Career Loans doesn't give out the microloans, it's HSBC Bank. Uh, our counselors will help you with the application process. And this microloan is up to $15,000, the minimum. $1,500. We have a low interest rate of HSBC Prime plus 2%. This interest rate is locked in for the duration of your repayment period. So you don't have to worry about it fluctuating, going up or anything like that. Um, it can be up to four years. You can have up to four years to pay off the micro loan. And that depends on the size of the loan. More about the loan. What can you use the micro loan for if you're trying to get back to your career? If you're trying to figure out an alternative career and you need some credential assessments, maybe you need to take an exam, maybe you need to get some additional training to upgrade your skills, materials for books and equipment, basically anything to make your life and your career path easier to get to your desired career is something that can be eligible for expense. If you have any specific questions, get in touch with us and we would be happy to answer. How do you get in touch with us? www.careerloans.ca. All our info is there um, and you can get in touch with us. Email is info at careerloans.ca. If you wanna get in touch with a specific counselor from Alberta or Saskatchewan, we have 1-800 toll free numbers. Uh, local cell phone lines are there as well. And info ab at careerloans.ca, info sk at careerloans.ca for emails if you want to get in touch with that. But if you have to choose one thing, it's the website, www.careerloans.ca. If you want to stay up to date with us, we encourage you to follow us on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. Hear about our latest webinars, blogs, and any other exciting news for, from the Career Loans team. So that is it for the Career Loans presentation. I'd like to invite Candice back on to talk about some um, questions you might have. And you know, there's still time, type in the questions if you need. Uh, I'm seeing a question here. So Candice, someone's interested if your slides will be available. Um, will your slides yeah. be available? Yeah, I can make them available. Gavin, do you usually handle the email stuff? Like I can make them into um, a PDF form or whatnot. And then, yeah, I will provide those. That's not an issue at all. Amazing, so send that to me afterwards. Anyone who's registered for this webinar will receive a follow-up email from me with the survey link for, so we want your feedback. And of course, Candice's slides, very helpful. Another question. Um, I sometimes find it difficult to be motivated during the winters, especially during, you know, with the cold temperature and the shorter days. What are some ways to get motivated? I know you, you kind of talked briefly about this, but if you can expand, you know, what are some ways to get motivated? Yeah, I think you need to figure out what makes you happy and maybe why you're unmotivated. Um, and, and that takes a level of self-awareness and um, introspection. So, you know, it could be your diet. If you're, you know, eating a lot of, you know, sugary things, processed foods, that could just really be, you know, weighing your energy down and depleting you throughout the day. Um, you know, if you're taking too many stimulants and you're finding you're crashing by three o'clock and then, you know, you're home and you're just like, I can't do anything. So it's going to be different for everyone. So I would, you know, I would literally go through your day and just look at the activities, look at the things that you're doing. Am I drinking enough water? Um, and it could, you know, it could be a small change or, you know, sometimes it's a big change. It's like, I'm not happy in my job or I'm not motivated doing this. So, um, you know, taking a real clear lens at your life and, and making changes. Like if you are someone that is going to work, you know, the sun is, does not set until like nine 30 now. And, um, the sun goes down by five 36. The majority of us are, you know, in the day, in the dark, if you're in the office. So it could be something as simple as I just need to get out and go for a walk or, um, you know, invite more social interaction into my life. So I would say, you know, journal or, or record what you're doing, what you're eating, 
what you're not eating and just kind of go through and, and dissect that way and figure it out from there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. And I, f- I feel like because it's so cold in the winter that that's why you want to stay indoors, but it's yes. such a great tip to go outside, get some sunlight. You know, I know the days are short, but just to get some sunlight whenever you can. Right. Um, the, the most uncomfortable part, part of going outside is the initial five minutes when your body temperature is climatizing. I can promise you like you know, after that five minutes of kind of in you, you know, get a little bit of a sweat on, you're going to absolutely enjoy the walk. Um, And again, do stuff, do activities that make you joyful, not something that feels like more work, because then you're not going to do it, then you're going to shame yourself. And you know, that's not good. So um, invite more joy into your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Another question I'm seeing from the Q&A is uh, what kind of exercises are good during the winter? or, Or what would you recommend? I hate that word exercise because to me it's like like rigid regimen got to exercise um it's different for everyone like anything that gets your heart rate up is good um and depending on you know what space you have available uh if you're working out from home maybe you're going to the gym um for myself i love going online and looking at like new techniques or like videos i tried mimicking some dance moves um, that was horrible and horrifying. I have no idea how these, you know, millennials and younger kids are like doing these dance videos, but, you know, just doing stuff that, that feels right. Um, lifting weights is really good. It's really important for anyone that's 35 and over 40 and over because we start to lose our muscle mass. So, um, you know, don't look at it as like, I have to exercise, um, you know, invite movement, going for a walk, maybe just stretching, yoga is also low impact um yeah any of those things i would say would be a a recommendation and are on my list awesome awesome uh here's a career loans related question i will try to answer uh the question is how can we extend our loan for four years so i just want to clarify on the micro loan there's a maximum repayment period of up to four years and in order to get that four-year repayment period you would have to get like the maximum allowable loan, which is $15,000. And that's what, so if you take out less money, the the loan repayment period will be shortened as well. Uh, I hope I answered that question. Um, Do send us an email if you have any more concerns or questions about the micro loan. Uh, Candice, one last question for you. What's one thing, maybe one might be, it might be too hard to put as one thing, but what is one thing or maybe several things you would tell a newcomer about winter in Saskatchewan? Well, the first, like I said, um, would be dress for winter because if you're cold outside, that's going to completely ruin the enjoyment of winter. And I would have to say, you know, I love summer, but winter is beautiful. Like the first snowfall, like the frost on the trees, like it is, it's majestic outside. So I would say dress for the weather because if you don't dress for it, you're going to you're not going to like it. You're not going to love it. So dress properly and just get outside in nature and experience the fresh air, um, play in the snow, approach winter with a childlike lens and just get curious and have fun in it. Do something that you've never done before. Um, Yeah, I would, that would be my recommendation. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for today's webinar, Candice. I hope our audience, I know I found this information session very, very helpful. I hope our audience found it the same. I have to say one more thing, and I was thinking about it. A self-care activity would be accessing the free career and financial counseling. That's an investment in yourself. And if I can say another thing to newcomers, um, our internationally trained newcomers, sign up. It's free. You know, everyone should have access to Um, programs and services that help you flourish and uh, learn a little bit more about yourself. So 100%, please, please, please register and sign up. Absolutely, absolutely. There is no obligation to take on a microloan. So at the very least, you're getting a free career counseling session with our expert counselors who work with newcomers. So a great point. Thank you very much, Candice. I do want to wrap up today's session by uh, promoting our future webinar. Hold on, let's see, here we go. 
Our next webinar is financial literacy for new Canadians. So I think a lot of people, whether you're new Canadian or not, finan financial literacy is something really important, which should be, uh, which we should all know about. And we will have the chance to learn about this topic on February 18th next month at 12 p.m. noon, Saskatchewan time. Find out more in, by emailing us, visiting our website. The event link is down below, but I will be sending up a follow-up email. So don't go panicking, scribbling down that URL. It will be in the follow-up email. We hope to see you there as well. Uh, one more thing, please take our survey. I mentioned it before. It will be in that email as well. Your feedback will be very much appreciated. Last but not least, here is our contact information once again. Uh, toll-free numbers for both provinces and their respective emails. Our website is www.careerloans.ca. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. Candice, I want to thank you one more time. Wow, that was such an amazing presentation. Thank you for today. I, I learned a lot. I'm sure our audience members learned a lot as well. No worries. Yeah, I'm just responding to everyone. And thank you, everyone, for being, you know, great participants and, and um, tuning in and joining us. It's always great to to do these. And um, usually I'm in Gavin's chair a little bit. So it's a little bit interesting being on this side, but I definitely look forward to connecting with all of you um, on the next webinar. All right. Take care, everyone, and have a nice day.